For you guys wanting to see a CRT set repaired, I have a little small Electro Home Model 33CJ12, which is a Mitsubishi chassis VLAC47R, and I'm going to fix this one the hard way. No cheating, no schematic. I'm going to fix this without a schematic, and I'm going to do it fairly quickly because, you know, I've got lots of experience with CRTs, as, it, as you will see coming right up. Today I have a 14 inch, it's an Electro Home branded. It's a Mitsubishi TV, and it's totally dead. Have no idea what's wrong with this one. Let's pull the back off and get started. Note, it's a two-tone set. It originally wasn't a two-tone set. It was originally this color, but just through the ages, the plastic back, obviously being made out of a different type of plastic material, has discolored. That's the same with the buttons on the front here. See the, the control buttons? They've all discolored as well. Let's get a look at the back of this and see how old this one is. Well, the manufacturer date sticker has come off the back, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is probably 1986, 1987, somewhere in that era because the dealer that I worked at, we carried Electro Home, which was Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi was required by the Canadian government to pick up a failing company. There were embargoes on against the Japanese back in the early to mid 80s. And uh, if you wanted to sell your products in Canada, you had to buy a failing Canadian manufacturer. And at the time, Electro Home, which was a Canadian manufacturer, they were on the brink of going under. So to get into Canada, Mitsubishi purchased Electro Home, the name, and they assembled their TVs in Canada. And my first projection set that I bought new, I'd had a few older, like Sony's. I had a Sony front projector at one point actually I didn't have it my parents had it but I got it for them my first projection set was an RCA with the three tubes and a mirror that you swung out and it projected it onto a curved screen that was my first projection set my second projection set was a 50 inch Electro Home I paid four grand for it wholesale it sold for six thousand bucks wholesale was four thousand and I bought that in, I'm going to say, it was 80, 89, I think, 88, beginning of 89. This would have, this TV would have been from that same era. I'm going to say 88, 89 era. Because we started carrying Electro Home when they first got to Canada, which was, I think, 88 or 87. But it was interesting because, you say, the, 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 uh, the government had an embargo on the Japanese because, uh, of course, there was the concern that the Japanese were dumping uh, products in Canada. So the government wouldn't let them bring products in unless they were sold using a Canadian name. Panasonic used Quasar to get their line of TVs into Canada. They picked up the Motorola Quasar brand. Now, people today talk about how the Chinese are dumping their products and causing domestic companies to go under and so forth. Well, they weren't the first to do that. That was uh, good old Japan that did that back in the uh, late 70s and into the 80s. See, it says Mitsubishi right here. I wonder if there's a date code on the tube. say where the tube was made. Was the tube made here or was it tube? Oh, made, tube was made in Singapore. Printed in Singapore. The chassis was made in Singapore, it looks like, too, and they just assembled them here in Canada, which was quite common. That's what a lot of the companies did. Panasonic used to bring their boards in from Japan and just put them together here with the Panasonic and Quasar names. Anyway, it looks like this set's a virgin. Doesn't look like anybody's ever been into this one. Because typically, when techs get into these things, they, 
they quite often don't bother to do up the wire ties the same way that they uh, they came out of the factory so I get the stinking suspicion that this set here has never had a never had a screwdriver touch it unplug the degaussing coil and check it out and see where the fault is. First things first, check the fuses. Fuse is okay. Second thing, check the standby power supply. So on this unit there's a separate small transformer here. And what this one does, this supplies low voltage do the CRT cap there to protect the tube. It supplies low voltage to, uh, oh, look at this board. Looks like we probably have capacitor leakage all over the place on this thing. Anyway, let's check the standby, standby transformer. Standby transformer is this one right in here, wherever the heck it is. There's a, there's a transformer right here and there's a relay over here and the, the standby transformer supplies 12 volts to the standby circuit and if it's not working the TV is never going to turn on so let's check to make sure first of all that the standby transformer isn't open because a common fault on these TVs was a power surge would cause the transformer to go open although I see lots of other I see lots of other problems waiting to happen there's obviously been capacitors that have been leaking so even once I get this set going there's going to be more problems than just it not turning on but let's check the transformer and see whether the transformer is whether the winding is any good yeah 400 ohms before hmm, let's just uh, plug it in and see if we get any power see if I get any secondary output from the transformer. So let's plug it in. We'll put the meter in AC mode. Volts AC. Okay, power on. Okay, we should have 120 volts, which we do. We have 121 volts. So we know we got power getting into it and we have 13 volts on the secondary. So we know that the transformer is functional, yet the TV won't turn on when I press the power switch. No clicking, no relay clicks. Therefore, we may have a standby problem. Let's check the, the DC voltage coming off of the rectifier. This is for the standby circuit. We see we have 15 volts, which is which is good. And that goes down. There's a capacitor there. Don't mind the fan, it's squeaking. It's a hot day today. I've got the ceiling fan on and it's uh, chirping away in the background. Here's our relay here. I don't see any attempt push the power button there's nothing on the relay so we have to investigate and see where we're losing power going over to the main microcontroller to turn it on either we've lost power to it or there's a break somewhere or a component that's failed we have to stare at this one for a bit I may even have to uh, dig up a schematic for it not so the first thing I'm going to look at is this capacitor that's hanging off of the standby supply right here this one I think is 3 C395 that one is the main filter for the standby so if it's gone bad and we get a lot of ripple on there it's going to cause problems and if we look at this one here if we look up close to it we'll see that it's spewing its guts so this cap is definitely bad for starters so we'll just try pulling that one and, and replacing it or, or jumper and one over top of it this one here definitely that was definitely bad and that definitely would certainly cause this set not to attempt to turn on even though we've got 16 volts on the standby uh, there could be a fair bit of ripple in there 
So let me just warm up the soldering iron and we'll pull this one out and uh, take a look at it and we'll try putting another one in. See whether that will bring this thing back to life. This has got a lot of capacitors that are leaking. You can see it on the board here. All these caps in this area here, they're all bad. They're all leaking and it's just a mess. Of course, this would have been built right in that era of the bad caps. These are all in the vertical circuit. These ones down here. But this would have been built right in that time when all the caps were bad. So this set's probably not worth fixing, but it's more of a... Let's just see if we can turn the thing on and get it to do something. Right now it's not doing anything, so... And I should correct myself. It's not that it's probably not worth fixing. It's not worth fixing. The, the only person that would have any type of value in something like this is somebody who's looking for a little CRT TV for, for gaming with and for, for vintage games. And those people are few and far between. Okay, this is the cap that's come out of the board. As you can see, it's in, in tough shape. We'll just look at the what the value of it is here, just measure it and see how it looks. It's at 330 at uh, 25 volts. Capacity wise, it's measuring 340. ESR, though, is probably through the roof. Point 0.8, so for 330 at 35 volts, it should be between point 0.1 and point 0.2, and it's coming up at point 0.8. So clearly this cap is bad. Whether that's what's preventing this set from turning on or not, uh, I'm gonna probably say it's not, but we'll, we'll try a new one just for the hell of it and see whether it will uh, give us any different results. Okay, new parts in place, nothing. Still no click or attempt to turn on. So that's not what was causing the problem. And that can be verified because we can look at the voltage across the cap. We're still gonna have the same voltage as before, about 15 volts, right? 15 volts, there you go. Okay, we're gonna start measuring some voltages here. Uh, I've kept onto my common ground. Here's my positive supply. Where are we here? 15 volts. Let's just see whether we get any voltage coming up on the main chip here. We should have something on here. We should have a standby voltage, probably five volts, but let's see if we see anything. I have not gone and looked for a schematic. I don't know how lucky I will be in finding one. I'm not going to buy one. I know I could go and get a Sam's photo fact. I could buy one. I'm not going to buy a schematic for this thing. If I can find one that's free, I'll use it. But otherwise, forget it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go to the trouble. And those of us that have been doing this for years, we can generally work without a schematic. It was very seldom when I was in the business that I actually had to go and pull out a, a service yeah, man. No voltage at all to this chip. I think this is the, that was the main micro. See either that one or this one here. And that's the difference between a tech and someone who's got an engineering mindset that knows how the circuit is designed and how it should work. I see and this one's the main controller. This is the audio video in their jungle. I look at the traces on the board and visually build a schematic in my mind. So no B plus, no standby. So we trace it through. 
Our standby is here. This is the switch, I believe. It switches the, the relay on. Relay's got the B plus on it. The other side will also have 15 volts because the transistor's not turning on to turn on the set. I'm letting this part play in real time because I'm actually thinking about where the voltage should be going to get to that chip. I got my magnifiers on now so I can see a little better because some of these traces are pretty small. This should be the standby. There's a Zener diode here and there's a resistor across this load. I wonder if this Zener diode is shot. Because I got zero volts there. So let's just check and see if that Zener diode is shorted. This looks to be the regulator that regulates voltage to the IC. Let's just check it and see if it's shorted. Aha! Aha! That Zener diode is shorted. Could that be why this TV has not got power? Let's remove it and see whether I can find one that will be suitable. So here's the Zener diode I've just pulled out. And it's not shorted. Aha! It's not shorted, but we have a short on the circuit. So what else could be shorted? Something's dead short across there. Put this back in the circuit as it's okay. What else could it be? Could it be another capacitor that's gone dead short? It's a possibility. It could be anything that's gone dead short. Something is shorting out that supply voltage, pulling that, that uh, standby voltage down to zero. Could be the chip itself too, but that's unlikely. It's usually it's going to be something else in here that's shorting it out. So we just have to kind of go through the circuit and see what it is. think that there was a day that I enjoyed this stuff. What drugs was I on? Joy repairing TVs. Yeah, I'm afraid there's people out there that, that actually believe that I enjoyed doing this. <laughs> I fooled them all for 20 years. Fooled my boss for 20 years too. So now it's just a hobby, but uh, I did this for so long, it was, uh, people would think I was making a career out of it. Oh, wait a minute, I did make a career out of it. Not a career I would advise anybody to do either, to tell you the truth. So, I haven't soldered this diode back in yet. It's only soldered on the one side you can hear but the short is still there what else is on here that could short that out see where the trace goes trace comes down here it's capacitor across there 
that's not shorted. That is. So the trace comes down, comes down this way, down to here. C733 is across here. Hmm. And then there's another capacitor here that's across it. And then from there, it makes its way down to the chip. So we got C717. And we got this other one, C733, which is off of there. Hmm. Wonder if one of those two is shorted. We'll just uh, we'll just open up one side of them and see whether the short goes away. Could be the chip, although I would say it's unlikely, but it could be. So this one here was uh, this one here, C717. Let's just open that side up, see whether the short goes away. that one's open now. And that's the cap there. We'll see if that cap is shorted. Oh, what do you know it is? Wait, wait a sec. Uh, checking the ground here. Let's remove it and see whether that one's shorted. Feels like it might be. Seems like it. It's uh, leaking all kinds of crap out of it. Bingo! That cap. 1000 microfarad at 6.3 volts is shot. Let's try powering the setup without that cap. See whether anything different happens, like whether I get any click or anything when I press the power button. Oh, what do you know? The set turned on. Do you hear it? I think I got it. Let's just put a new one in there. I mean, this will probably work without it. It's just a, it's just a filter on the. Yeah, let's, I, for that matter, let's just turn it on and see if I get a picture before I even bother to replace the stupid cap. It's. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I've got one. It's just, just a thousand microfarad at 6.3 volts. I'm sure I've got one. I can put one of those in there for the heck of it. bigger ones but tell you what, for now let's just power the setup and see what type of picture I get if I get a picture at all then we'll deal with that later but there we go one part one part first thing well second part I checked but the other one that was I put it back in the set because it's measuring okay even though it's leaking it needs to be changed but it's just about see if we can get this TV to run Power. There won't be any sound because the speaker's not connected. Am I on? Yeah, I believe it's on now. Let's just see whether whether anything comes up on the screen. Well, I don't seem to have any high voltage. Let's just see. I'll just measure the uh, see whether the whether there's any power at the, the output transistor here. So let's just turn it on and we'll measure the. 82 volts. So no, no horizontal output. There's going to be other, many other things wrong with this thing. Other capacitors are shorted, I'm sure as well. You can see the sad shape of the caps on this. 
that was the regulator actually I was looking at, not the output. The output transistor is down here. And it has about, what, 100 and some odd volts on it? Let's see here, collector, 108. Yeah, so that, it should be running. And is there voltage on the drive transformer? We'll put the scope on it and see if there's any horizontal drive. Okay, I'm gonna scope the output. This is the drive to the drive transformer. This is what drives the horizontal output. Okay, when I turn on the set, we have a drive signal. Therefore, this set should be running. Let's take a look at the output from the output transistor. Let's see if we have any, anything there. Looks like I do have I do have a drive signal. Therefore, I should have a picture or something on the screen. I should have high voltage because I have a nice strong drive signal. You can see it right there. That's clean too. I can't even display the whole volta full voltage on this thing because my, my scope doesn't go down anymore. I have to turn down the gain. There's my horizontal output. I should have something on the screen. So I do have a raster. Okay. What else do I have? Looks like there's actually snow there. Huh. Wonder why I didn't have anything before when I tried it. Let's hook up an antenna to this thing and see if I can actually get any type of a picture. And channel buttons. I no on-screen display either. In fact, the only thing that's working is the high voltage and the, I've got a raster. Oh, I can see something up here on the on-screen display. That's a good sign. Let's see if I can turn down the size of it so I can actually see what's there. The vertical size looks to be way too high. Oh, I see some magic smoke. I see a capacitor that's bubbling up here. We have a we have an eruption. <laughs> Woo, stinks too. Yeah, I better turn it off. Well, that one's definitely shot. <laughs> oh man. I'm surprised that that's the only one that's gone poof. Yeah, ever seen that happen? Cap just blows. Well, we gotta change that one. We'll change that one out and see whether I get anything else happening. I, this is gonna pique my interest now that I've got a raster on this set that maybe, just maybe, I might get something to work on here. Yeah, it is warm. Which one is it here? One of these ones. That one or is it the next one over to it? I think it's the next one. Oh, it's this one here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the lead just snapped right off of it while I was going to remove it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think, you think it's bad? 2216 volts. Yeah, yeah, just uh, literally blew up. And these are uh, Nikicon. So much for them being a good cap. See, that's what I mean. That old, that old amplifier worked on with the 45 year old caps. It sounds like a champ. You can probably hear it booming away in the background. It's playing in the house, it's been playing all day. If you hear music playing, it's because it's playing in my living room. That's 50, that one's 45 year old capacitors and not one went boom. And this one here, this is like from the night, late 1980s and I powered this thing up and it's not even a high voltage cap. And I got one that's blowing its guts as soon as I turn it on. It's not the only one that's bad, but 
on this thing I'll set like this I'm going to put as little effort into it as I can because it's not worth anything it's just it just becomes a challenge right I do this stuff now for the fun of it Yeah, the negative lead that broke off that. There we go. We go and find a 2200 at 16 volt. Hopefully, I've got a used one that I can throw in here. Yeah, I got a 2200 at 18 volts. So we'll put this one in and uh, see what happens. Whether we get anything different in that blank raster. Like maybe some snow. That would be a nice sign. Get some snow on the screen. Gets a picture from the tuner. Maybe even get some more magic smoke. Have another eruption of a capacitor. Connect my cable again and see whether we get anything different happening. Contact. Got my raster again. Ah, I see something on the screen. Not very good, but I see a picture. What is it? What's the picture of? Looks like my security cameras is what it looks like. Very faint. We'll just turn that screen down a bit so we don't have all the drive lines in the screen and see whether that'll improve the picture at all. Not really. But what this does confirm is this does confirm that the tuner is working because it's tuning in channel 9, which has got my cameras on it, even though they look like crap. Um, so 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Yeah, I can't see anything on those. I wonder if I hook up the speaker wires whether I'll hear any sound. Yeah, sound. I wonder what happens if I just try adjusting the subcontrast control. Well, I got a picture. Turn down the screen control and see if it get rid of those drive lines. Oh, what do you know? Look at that. Wow. I have a picture on this thing. CNN that I've got running on this channel now. Let's see whether I can. Uh, there's my one of my test channels. My cameras. Huh. I just had to adjust the subcontrast control. I wonder if it was just a bit dirty. Just back it off a bit there and see how what the picture does. Yeah. 
I'm wondering if that control is just a little bit dirty. Because that certainly is looking looking not too bad for a TV that's as old as this thing is. Let's just see if I can adjust the focus on here. I'll just turn it around a bit so we can get at the, the focus and screen controls on the side here. Turn off that. Actually, you know what? It's not looking half bad. That's not looking half bad at all. Gypsy Kings playing. I have a concert of the Gypsy Kings. I don't want to leave that on. this on for a minute so I can adjust the focus and so forth. I can show some commercials. I don't have a remote handy to go through the, the, uh, the menus on here to set it up. I can also adjust the height, the vertical height on here. Bad at all. Huh. And I probably have to shut this off now that the show has started again. You know, this TV doesn't look half bad. It only two parts, only two capacitors were replaced in this. And I think I'm going to stop while I'm ahead because it's not going back into service. This will be a TV that I just give away, right? It'll be put up on like the give it away websites. You know, 14 inch TV, good for vintage video games, and that's about it. But it's actually not looking bad at all. I mean, even on camera, it doesn't look to be too bad. Yeah, it's a little bit distorted here. The picture's blooming a bit. That could also be the tube is getting a bit tired. I mean, this thing's been sitting around for so many years without being used. But for a TV that's as old as this one, it's actually not doing too bad. I might even just hang on to it and use it out on my patio when the TV that I use out there now, which I don't use very often, I have a little 14 inch CRT Panasonic that's as, at least as old as this one. That I use them out on my patio you know, to uh, watch the news or something on, right? I'm not allowed to watch TV outside. That's that's forbidden. If I'm sitting out on the patio, I'm supposed to be not tuning into TV or internet or anything else. It's supposed to be for relaxing time. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I would say that this one's actually, it's fixed. Let's see how the sound is on it. Connect the speakers up by hand. It's got sound. I'm going to say this one's fixed. Let's put it together. Now, all likelihood, what's going to happen to this TV is that it's not going to get given away because nobody's going to want it. I'm going to try, but it's going to go back into my storage unit, and it's going to sit there for years. And then years from now, I'm going to haul it out again, and I'm going to find that it doesn't work, and then we're going to fix it again for whatever else goes wrong with it down the road. That's, in all likelihood, what's going to happen to this thing when it goes back into storage, because um, it's not going to get used. Degaussing coil. 
We'll just redress the wires. Get the back on the set. speaker almost forgot about that and no it wouldn't be the first time I've forgotten about that that happened on more than one occasion when I was working in the shop you know you get the TV all bad together and you turn it on it's like oh wait a minute I forgot to hook up the speaker that happened on more than one occasion usually by my assistant he was usually the guy that was putting TVs together. My assistant would take the backs off stuff, give it to me, I would troubleshoot it, and then hand it back to him and he'd put it together and uh, to say, turn it on and say, hey, he'd be like, oh, you screwed up, there's no sound. And I'd be like, did you plug the speaker in? Don't! Oh! channels and the time in channel 17 looking good okay that's it thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one bye for now